Hey, hi there, my name is James Smith, I'm a 3D artist living in the United Kingdom and I currently work as an automotive artist. Um, today I'm going to use HDR Light Studio inside 3ds Max to enhance an HDRI and really produce a better render of car than uh, the HDRI on its own would produce. So you can see I'm in Max 2016 and running Corona 1.7. So let's get started. Okay, so before I do that, I've just rendered the car with the base HDRI um, without any additional lights on top. And you can see that while it looks okay, the lighting's not really doing much for the car itself. Um, you see we're very flat on the bonnet. There's a little bit of highlight coming through here, but nothing that really makes the car look good. So what I'm going to do is take that into HDR Light Studio, add additional lights, and uh, then render out an HDRI that, when I render with it, will look a lot better for the car. Okay, so here we are inside Max. Um, to begin with, I'm just going to load up HDR Light Studio. Before I do that, first I need to give the program something to look at uh, as an HDRI loader. So here I'm going to just come into Scene inside Render Setup, and use Corona, and I'm just going to load in a Corona bitmap. Then, you can either get to rendering, and the HDR Light Studio connection will be just there. But I have it on my toolbar, I'm going to click here. Under IBL Hook, I'm just going to change to Corona Environment, so it can now see that map there. And I'm just going to hit Start, and that's going to load up the software. Okay, so here we are inside HDR Light Studio. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is actually load my HDRI as the base layer for us to paint lights onto. So to do that, I'm just going to click here on Picture Background. And then I'm just going to click into Light Properties. And go and find the image. Do you see this button here? Okay, so here's the image, I'm just going to double click it, and it will say you've selected a large image, image file that is not mitmapped. Um, so what HDRI Light Studio is going to do for me is convert this to uh, an image format that's much easier for it to use and display. Uh, so performance will be better by converting to a .tx file, so I'm just going to hit convert. Just do that. And it's going to do it for me, so I just need to give it a new name, so I'll just give it a name of converted. Hit save, and it will then convert the HDRI file and load it in for me. Okay, so here we are. You can see that I've got my HDRI loaded down here at the bottom, and up top currently it's not displaying anything background. What I'm going to do is tell it to display, just by coming to render settings, I want it to display the backplate that I'm going to use in my scene, so I'm just going to go ahead and load the backplate that I've got loaded inside Max. So now that we've got our HDRI loaded in, next thing I'm going to do is actually jump back to Max and start the scene transfer. What this will do is it will take my camera and any geometry I have in the scene and it will port it over to HDR Light Studio so I can see where I'm placing my lights onto the car. So I'm just going to take Alembic and click Export Scene. This might take a while, just have a bit of patience. Ok, that's finished exporting, so I'm just going to go back over to HDR Light Studio. And you can see that it's now loaded in from my camera's point of view, it's camera 01, and we can see the car and my floor uh, in the scene. So, first thing I'm going to do with this HDRI is rotate it uh, in the horizontal axis using handle U. So just by dragging you can rotate it to whichever direction you want. I want mine to spin 180 degrees around, so I'm lined up in my back plate. And then I'm just going to increase the base brightness just to give me something to work with. So, first light I'm going to place in my scene. I'm going to click on the round light here. And I'd like to first of all bring up this front side of the car, this front right quarter, I guess you could call it, that's facing the camera. So just by clicking round light and clicking onto the 
mesh of the car. You see I can place the light anywhere I want to. So I'm just going to click around here until I find something that I think is going to look quite nice. Now you can see that it's quite bright and very white which doesn't really reflect the atmosphere of my HDR. So what I'm actually going to do is under blend mode I'm going to change it to amplify. Now what this is going to do is it's going to take, let's see if I can just show you better here, it's going to take its position over the top of the HDRI, look at the color of the pixels behind the light and boost those colors. So I'm still going to be lighting my car but I'm going to be using the HDRI's natural colors to do it. You'll find that you will have to increase your brightness quite far to do this as in this case my HDRI is quite dark and there's not much uh, light intensity coming out of the night sky. So I'm just going to increase this to about 3000, maybe 3500. Now you can see on my car I've now got quite an orange light. Um, I probably don't want this sort of look. I think it looks quite, it looks a bit better being a little bit more neutral, neither cold nor warm. So what I'm going to do here under color mode is just pick a kind of pale blue. It's just going to take some of that warmth out of it. And I might need to boost my color a little bit as I'm now taking a bit of the intensity out. Of the light. So I think 4000 is about right. So you can see just by turning it off and on, we're placing more light onto our scene. So I'm going to look at doing that again to light the front left side of the car now. So again, just by clicking round light and clicking onto my mesh, I can place a light that I think looks good, would make the car render well, but doesn't look too unnatural. So again, just to make it look a little bit more in situ with the scene, I'm going to click on Amplify. I'm just going to boost this to maybe 1500. And I think if I just move it across slightly, so instead of clicking onto the car now, I'm just going to use this slider on the right. And I think just by pulling it up and pulling it slightly across. There, that's a little bit better. Okay, so now I'm getting a nice amount of light cast across this front left quarter, but also I'm getting a little bit of light onto my windscreen as well, which is good. As it, if you have a character mesh in there that doesn't look great, or maybe you're going to be placing a car in there, a uh, character in there afterwards, a little bit of light, a little bit of reflection, especially from the windscreen, kind of helps to hide that. So now I'm going to look at backlighting the car. Um, this is just going to help kind of bring it off the back plate a little bit and just give it a bit more vibe, a bit more dyne, make it look a little bit more dynamic in the scene. So to do that I'm actually going to use a rectangle light this time and instead of clicking and placing it on the car, which I could do, let's undo that, because I want this to be perfectly behind the car I'm going to come down here onto the canvas and just drag the light to where I know it's going to be from behind casting from behind the car, so you can see here I know that because that's exactly behind the car in the HDRI it's going to light the car from the back. So if I just go to Amplify I'm going to boost the brightness a little bit. I don't want this to get too crazy which should be kind of there because I think that would just start to look quite strange. There's no lighting behind our car no crazy strong lights behind the car in our back plate. So I just think somewhere around 300 yeah, I think 300 looks pretty good. As you can see here, it's now just bringing the car slightly off the plate. And I think just placing one more round light just here is really going to help to bring up this area just around the front. So if I turn that on, just up my brightness slightly and go back to Amplify. Yeah, you can see it's just making it a little bit less flat around the bonnet here. Not bringing too much out, I don't want it to look insanely lit, but this is just enough just to boost it slightly. Okay, so now I'm just going to jump back into Max and hit render, and we're going to see what that looks like. So now that you're in Max, if I just load up my material editor, you'll see that your bitmap is 
is looking at a temp file HDR Light Studio has created. So you don't need to re-render this every single time you add a new light and you want to check your renders. It's going to update on the fly using a temp file. So you can simply just hit render and see your output. Okay, so now that this is finished rendering, we can see inside Max now that coming for our original render, we've got a lot more lighting on the car. And not only that, it's a lot more dynamic as well. The car looks a lot better in the scene it matches the back plate better and overall it's just a better render. So now I'm going to go to HDR Light Studio, come to Project and say Render Production HDRI. Just going to pick a size of maybe 10,000 by 5,000, just give me quite a lot of resolution to work with. Browse to my output folder and hit Render. Now HDR Light Studio is going to render the environment map at the full res instead of just the preview resolution and it will then update that inside 3ds Max and I will then have the full HDRI loaded in. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you found this helpful and uh, give it a try yourself.